What's up, man? 17 Gamers. My name's Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're continuing our series on just live gameplay, and really the goal here is to kind of address situations as they come up, different reads, different uh, tendencies, different things that I think you can learn from just watching a regular game. So I'm really excited uh, to share with you guys today. And uh, what I hope you gain from this is just one thing. Uh, normally there's one takeaway, one one really, really important lesson to be learned from each game. And so uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to share something that'll be useful uh, today. So starting out, uh, I'm running the New England Patriots defensive playbook. Uh, the main reason is because I was going to try to mess around with the nickel 335 odd a little bit more. Uh, if I get up, you know, if I get a lead and I can just start sending some pressure uh, and, and running that pass defense. But uh, what I really do most more than anything, as you guys probably know, is the 4 3 under. That's my base defense. That's the, that's really where it starts and ends for me. Uh, if I can, you know, if I can keep in this 4 3 under, that's really where I want to be. Uh, and so, what we like to do is come out, we really just run cover two, Tampa two, um, and we stick in it for quite quite a while. Normally, uh, what, we, what we'll also do is we, we have a couple of different plays uh, that we'll utilize to kind of take away some of the things that Tampa two doesn't take away. But uh, by and large, uh, the Tampa two is really where we're going to spend uh, a bulk of our time here. So he's got uh, crossing routes, drag trail, wide trail, um, nothing too special so far. It's mainly been crossing routes, mainly been the wide trail. Well, we'll see what he does here on fourth and six. Uh, looks like he's going to go ahead and go for it. So what we're going to do, he's ran crossing routes a couple times, hasn't had a whole lot of success. Trying to think of where he's going to go. If I was him, where I would attack is the uh, intermediate flat so see if he does that there's the quick zig goes up over top let's see if we can knock that out of the way and we do we're able to so now we go on offense now this is one of those situations guys you got the ball on the 37 yard line you got good field position one thing that i'm starting to become much more of an advocate for especially on the offensive side of the ball is is taking what the defense gives you i think that that's something to be said um, a lot of people don't really do that what they try to do is they try to run their play against anything and the problem is it doesn't really work like that. Like, there is there is a little bit of game management and a little bit of, like, simplicity and tiny little tweaks here and there and just little bitty things that you can do. And it really does help you win football games, in my opinion. Uh, if you're able to really just kind of not turn the ball over, like, if you, if you really, really do a good job of that, as I throw an interception... A little late on my read. I am having a, a very difficult time recently with my reads. Um, they're open. The receiver was open. Like, if you go back and watch that play and replay, that receiver was open. I just threw it too late. And it's on me. Like, I – and I I have just been really struggling lately. Matt, like, with my reads, I've not been able to hit them. They're open, they're there, but I just, I have not hit them. And it's caused me a lot of trouble, a lot of turnovers. But, you and you're on to the next play, right? You can't dwell on the past, you can't, you can't go back and fix it, you can't change it, you can't go back and, you know, what if, what if, what if. Like, I am on to the next play. And that's a hard thing to do, and it's taken me a long time to, to be okay with turning the ball over. Not in the not in the sense I'm okay with it that I want to I want it to continually happen, but in the sense that I'm okay I can come back and I can play lockdown defense and adjust. And again, to me, it's all about taking the taking the game one play at a time. Most people don't do that. Most people try to win the game in the first half. Okay, and uh, I think if you can figure out how to take it just one just one play at a time, just just one tiny inch at a time. It changes everything because you're not so consumed and angry and emotional when you play. It, it, it really does cut through that that noise. And uh, Okay, so real quick here, something I think is important to learn is, is pre-snap reads here. So he's showing man-to-man -man coverage because the linebacker is bounced out on the 
left side corner. The safety's down. Probably cover one is really the, the sense that I'm getting here. Yep, cover one. There we go. We checked out on the running back, and there's some yardage. So, see, we there, we have the reads. It's just hitting them. And, and that's why I keep – I'll keep harping on it to the day that I don't play mad anymore is it's all about progression and reads and can you hit your receiver when he's open. If you can hit your receiver when he's open, you'll do great things. If you can't hit him, then you're going to have a hard time. And that's just the bottom line. Like any defense, there's holes, there's weaknesses, there's openings. You as a quarterback – have to be able to understand what what that hole is and that's why I think it's so that's that's really why I don't run a whole lot of extra plays that's why I run very simple offenses like simple 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 offense because I can't I mentally I have a hard time if I have to really think about what my receivers are doing and I can't focus on how to react to what the defense has been doing. There we go, cover two. Man, we get a good read there, get a little dot. Starting to go a little bit. Let's see if we can't get in here. Touchdown. Let's see what we got here. Dallas Clark. What was it he run there? He ran cover two. I think he did. I think he ran cover two, right? Nope, cover three. Missed my guy. I had a guy wide open in the far left flat. Second and eight here. A couple things. One, scoring a touchdown is not the most important thing in the world. Um, in my opinion, it's more important to make sure that you come away with points than you get a touchdown. Um, but you still want to try to get a touchdown, right? It's it's one of those things that doesn't really make sense um, when if you hear it come out of my mouth. But I personally just think it's so imperative that if you guys, if like if if we as a community could just get this through our heads that in the red zone you that's where your money's made that's where you win or lose football games a little play oh didn't work as good had triangle wide open out of the backfield just completely missed him have this new little play i've been working on steelers cross here um i think it's pretty good because what happens is you're able to put uh, Dallas Clark, you can put him on a little, this little flat route, little interior flat route. It, it's kind of neat. It just kind of changes things a little bit. So like they're gonna focus on him. It's gonna leave Kelvin Benjamin wide open. Um, and it's normally done pretty good. It's a, it's a pretty good little play uh, for me anyway. It, it's probably a little bit better than the double trail um, just because it looks the same as all of my other plays. Let's see if we can run this into the dirt. Oh, wow. And he just blocks you on that. So six to nothing, three minutes left in the second quarter. So that's another thing, too, that probably is important for you guys to kind of get a gauge of is, is what do you – again, I think this, this game – I was reading an article about Bill Belichick. He said he takes away the four to five things that you do best. Like that's what he's going to try to take away from you. And what I would almost and I I I, I see why. I would almost go a step further. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take away the four to five things. That I believe, in. actually, no, no, no. I want to take away the one thing in the moment that I think that I can get just to toasted by. Like, if there's one thing that you're going to be able to do that's going to really, really hurt me, I want to make sure that I don't give that up. And I'm okay with giving up a 30 yard post route in certain situations. It's a situational chess match. What do you want to take away? What do you want to give up? All of those things. 
that's, in my opinion, the essence of, of Madden is figuring out what do you want to take away? And, and then more importantly, how are you going to do that in a system that looks the same so that the offense can't really tell because what you want to have happen is you want them to be running plays that beat zone coverage and you're actually in man coverage. And man coverage, what man coverage does is it takes, it, it's very good at taking away the inside crossing routes, um, those kind of things as he throws an inside crossing route. Man, struggling. What man coverage does a really good job of, though, is it, it normally takes away uh, anything deep. Like anything, if the, like they're not going to run a streak on the outside, like that's not going to happen. They, where they're going to beat you in man is, direct, is, is, is actually across your mouth. I don't know why I said they're going to beat you in a different area. But they're gonna, that's where they're going to beat you in man. Where they're going to beat you in cover two zone, you can give them up underneath crossing routes probably. Um, they'll probably beat you there. They won't always beat you in crossing routes, but they, pro they, they will sometimes. Um, and then you have the deep middle of the field um, if you play it a certain way. So like what I'll often do is play over the top coverage and what over the top coverage allows me to do is it allows me to play a different leverage point and they play a little bit better up over, again, over the top. And so the interior middle is actually more open in the cover two. So then when I run this Michael cross press play, what it takes away is it takes away the interior middle of the field. I think it does a pretty good job uh, against crossing routes actually most of the time, uh, not all the time. There's that cross route, that guy right there. And sometimes you're gonna. Sometimes the offense is just gonna make a play, and I think that's the key. And, and what I try to do is I just try to limit the big ones. Like I don't really like if you go watch me. I I think I do a pretty good job of limiting the cut like the the, the cutthroat play. Like the play that really hurts me, I think I do a decent job at that one. Um, like right there, so streaks. Like I take that. Like you ain't doing that. Like more than likely, you're not gonna complete a whole lot of streaks and wheels and deep posts and that kind of stuff. Where you're gonna get me more more times than not is you're gonna get me on crossing routes and simple little plays. Like that's where I will have a little bit of hard time. Uh, and I think that's okay. You got to give something up. Let's see, let's get out of the pocket here, Manny. Get a few yards. Trying to work on this. Uh, there's one play that's interesting. This curl flat. I was, I was hearing. Uh, I heard somebody talk about curl flat. And what you do is you fade this tight end. You put Danny Amendola on a. Crossing out. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to hitch Danny Amendola. And let's see. Oh, that didn't work right. Didn't work right. Still got a lucky completion, but that didn't work right. I need to figure out a way to do it where I could bring Dallas, Cro Dallas Clark across the uh, formation so it looks exactly like all my other plays. to get moving user also like um that's probably a, another thing that I've, i i have a hard time with is user defender like i have a, i have i do have a very difficult time reading the user defender i often will throw it like if sometimes like even if you're covering me i'll probably throw it sometimes if i if the read if the read looks good oh i wanted a possession And that's that's not good. I mean, that's not good. That that is hard because what happens is 
mentally I have a hard time because I see cover two and you just make a good read and you make a good play. And I just, I have a hard time. So right now I'm thinking field goal. Uh, why? Because if I go up a field goal, then I come out and I go down the field and score a touchdown. I'm up three scores. Like if I score a touchdown, like it's, it's cool. It's, it's obviously better than a field goal, but right now mentally my mind is pretty set on getting a field goal here. I've noticed that the possession catch works very well, um, especially against man-to-man -man coverage. Like, if you're open, but it's a tighter window, I would probably recommend going with a possession catch. Wow, he made a really good read, made a really good play on that. I haven't figured out what to do with Larry Fitzgerald yet. I think this is what I'll do, something like this. good read so another thing you have to think about is like time management like this situation now puts me in quite a predicament oh no oh my god got a guy wide open it's so dumb so fourth and 13 why am I going for this because I don't think I can make the field goal Oh, Eli Manning. Eli Manning, you missed that. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Dang it. So, man to man. Not too bad. some pressure here so we're gonna send a little pressure here off that right edge we're gonna mesh Zeke one-on-one -on -one. Josh Norman makes a great play So right there, we well, we sent we just hadn't sent any. Um, what that play does specifically is it takes away everything deep and gives a little bit of passive pressure off that right side. Let's see if it's let's see what we're gonna do here. Cover one, we throw a dot. So that's just luck. I mean, that's just luck of the draw. Like he had been calling cover one quite a bit. We hadn't shown that look where we motioned that guy to the left side. Um, normally, that's good for one a game. I mean, it, and that's one thing that I try to do is limit. Like you have to limit your big play, like gamble play, and I. I I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it makes sense to me. You have to limit your, like, like your your chess match, like your checkmate play. So, for example, that's not a counter. That's a constraint theory play. And what a constraint theory play basically is, is a play that looks pretty similar. Like, we come out of the bunch, and 
but what it really is is it's it's a spinoff. It's a spinoff of, of what you've been doing. It's it's like a screen. It's like a screen. It's like a screenplay or uh, a different type of like run. Maybe like a mid draw. Uh, maybe like a play action pass. And what it does, or like like right there, it's a deep it's a deep bomb. Uh, I mean, number one, like we had to go to the end zone anyway because it's tied. But number two, like he had been running that cover one, cover one, cover one, cover one. And so we were able to um, catch him in a bad defense. I mean, that was just one of those plays where it's like, you know, might as well chuck it up there if it's three and a half. But occasionally we'll do things like that from time to time just to kind of mix it up it's hard because you really don't want to change a whole lot um, but at, at the same time you you know how important it is to it's it's hard because um, I'm a firm believer in you don't you don't change your look very often and what we do and we I think I'd probably do it better than most is dang it what a what a play man like I don't know what this guy's I've had a lot of trouble with pressure too like some people have just been blitzing the crap out of me lately like I've noticed like how do you handle that well I mean you slow down like if you notice I've I've stopped talking about what they're doing pre-snap because I've got comfortable and I've got two touchdown lead and on nine. You've got to do the little things. And it looks like he's going to quit, so that's that's not good. Okay. Well, guys, that's uh, today's video. What I want to say in, in conclusion, I think a good takeaway is there, if you watch that game, what I did really good was when I was reading the defense and really thinking of of what I needed to do, then I think I did really good. But when I wasn't, I did a terrible, terrible job. So what I would recommend is do a little things better than everybody else. I think I think great players consistently execute the little details better than everybody else. So hopefully that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.